Blessed Solanus Casey. In 1878, a diphtheria pandemic spread across the world, reaching rich and poor alike, from the Queen Victoria of the British Empire to the anonymous poor of the American Midwest. In one such Midwestern household, in a family of 18, two children succumbed to the illness. The Casey family's sixth child, Bernard Francis, suffered permanent damage to his throat and voice, leaving him with a soft and wispy voice. While Bernard always spoke softly, he was never so weak in body or spirit as he sounded. His family prayed the rosary together every day, promptly at 7 p.m. Leaving his family's farm at 18, Bernard worked as a lumberjack and a state prison guard before being asked to work as a streetcar operator in a dangerous area of Superior, Wisconsin. At the time, Superior was growing rapidly as a major Great Lakes port, billed as the New Chicago. In 1891, Bernard witnessed this new city at its worst when a drunken sailor stabbed a woman to death on his streetcar tracks. According to biographer James P. Derham, the brutal stabbing and the sailor's hysterical cursing symbolized the world's sin and hate and man-made misery. This display of human cruelty spurred Bernard to rethink his life and find a way to help alleviate suffering in the world. Acting on a call to the priesthood, but having little formal education, Bernard enrolled at St. Francis High School Seminary. However, at St. Francis, all classes were taught in either Latin or German, neither of which he had learned from his Irish immigrant parents. The leadership at St. Francis encouraged Bernard to seek membership in a religious order, a path that might allow him to become a priest despite his academic limitations. Were he to join a religious order, he would be eligible for ordination as a simplex priest, and could preside at Mass, but would not be able to preach publicly or hear confessions. Bernard returned home to carefully consider his options. While in prayerful reflection, before a statue of the Blessed Virgin, Bernard heard a voice. Go to Detroit. In Detroit, Bernard joined the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin, and was named for St. Francis Solanus, with whom he shared a love of the violin. On July 21st, 1898, Solanus Casey made his vows. Solanus struggled in his studies, but indeed was ordained as a simplex priest by Archbishop Sebastian Mesmer. On July 31st, 1904, Solanus Casey presided over his first celebration of the Mass in Appleton, Wisconsin, with the Casey family in attendance. For 20 years, Solanus Casey served in friaries across New York, in Yonkers, the Bronx, and Harlem. He would play volleyball and tennis with the younger Catholics, and played violin for his fellow friars. In 1924, Solanus returned to Detroit where he served primarily as a doorkeeper and receptionist. But in the quiet of the night, Solanus would kneel before the Eucharist in prayer, and every Wednesday he attended to the sick. Visitors found his speech inspiring and his compassion immeasurable. During this time, Solanus also began the Capuchin Soup Kitchen, which fed Detroit's poor throughout the Great Depression and continues to operate to the present day. In 1957, Solanus Casey was admitted to the hospital with a serious skin infection. There he died, with only his nurse present, having said at his last, I give my soul to Jesus Christ. Despite having lived a humble life of service and having fallen asleep in the Lord with such little company, 20,000 people attended his funeral services. Throughout his career as a friar, visitors to his assigned monasteries had been reporting miraculous cures that they were attributing to Solanus Casey's intervention. While in New York, Father Benno Eichinger directed that a record be kept of all reported miraculous healings, and by Solanus's passing in 1957, seven large notebooks had been completely filled with more than 6,000 prayer requests and stories of miraculous cures attributed to Solanus Casey. These included healings of sight, paralysis, 
organ failures, and cancer. On his deathbed, a visitor asked Solanus to pray for her barren womb, to be healed and to have a healthy child after three consecutive miscarriages. She later gave birth to healthy twins. For blessed Solanus Casey's part, he attributed the miracles to the mass of the Capuchin friars. Solanus Casey teaches us that with a soft voice and a heart full of simple faith, we can achieve the state of holiness that often seems out of reach in the modern world. Do not pray for easy lives. Pray to be stronger people. Do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Pray for powers equal to your tasks. Blessed Solanus Casey, pray for us.